Jean-Louis Sulzbarer. We have the timekeeper. Okay, the scene is yours. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jean-Louis Sulzbarer and I work here in Chista for Ericsson in a radio development unit. And Michelle, you know already, or? <laughs> yeah, I'm back in. Yeah, back in stage. Um, imagine you are in the middle of a big organization, many development units spread maybe all over the world. Uh, you have a complex feature that need to reach the market. And uh, it can be complex in the, that sense that it's many people involved. It can be also complex in the sense that it's deep into the architecture of a huge software uh, with millions of lines of codes. And as a product owner, you uh, may have, you have your team and you have maybe other teams that you need to interface as well uh, with their product owners to get the whole thing out. And in that situation then you can imagine me as being agile coach because that's what I'm doing. Um, telling to the, to the product owner that uh, you should maximize the return of investment. You should think of the product vision We've heard this before, this, this earlier. Uh, you should think of the requirements. You should uh, refine the backlog, prioritize it, so, so the teams know what to do. Quite common, you recognize this. But, Michelle, can you please tell us your reality with what are you doing? Yeah. Um, like, I've been working as an officer product owner for just over a year and a half now. And I have worked with small features where it's dealing with maybe one to two teams. And then with this larger feature that Ruth was talking about a little bit earlier. And in a case like that, it was up to nearly 15 teams at, at some stage. And the, the reality as a, an operative product owner in, in working in a, that small environment or the, the larger one, it's, it's completely different. There are two different worlds. Uh, the, some of the items have worked well and easily in the smaller environment, like the, the possibility to have close cooperation together with the teams to get that good working relationship, to have the ability to be able to be part of their daily meetings. That gets much more difficult in, in that larger scale environment, um, and you have a lot more external communication. So one of the, the challenges is really how can you actually balance those two? How can you still support the teams, but also handle this larger network that's actually around you? And since I have worked previously as a project manager, what I found was quite invaluable was actually some of the, the skills that you could actually take from project management. And one of those, the key one, was actually communication. Um, in this larger environment, the communication is, is key. The, the OPO is it's like a, a spider in the web. You're the, the face outwards for the team, but also the face back inwards towards the team. Um, so one is how do you actually get the, the right level of communication, the good level of communication, both towards the team, towards product management, towards other product owners, but also to be able to facilitate the, the teams to actually take their own communication if needed. So it's, it's a bit of both. And one of the, the major items was actually to be able to, to <coughs> visualize everything, to actually be able to see the, the big picture beyond what each individual team is actually doing, but how does everything <coughs> fit together? because we're not islands. All of these items, they, they need to fit together. We, we have dependencies. We need things to actually be able to, to come together at a certain point. So how do we actually know those dependencies? How can we put them together? How can we align them? And how do we know that we're actually on the right track? And that was where the experience of previously from being a, a project manager were actually very, very useful to be able to bring because it, it requires a little bit more in this context of more like a feature driver to actually be able to, to take that bigger picture and actually be able to bring it forward. And I guess one of the, the key items as well was to actually be able to be quite proactive, to, to try to look ahead and be able to see <coughs> what items could be foreseen could actually pop up in, in the future and to try to be able to avoid them. And the key aspect in that was actually having this bigger view and, and being able to, to know when we were deviating away from what we were actually hoping to achieve. And I guess where this became critical was actually when we started to deal with the deadline. Yeah, mm -hmm. did you hear that deadline? Not very, very agile, or is it? Uh, we would have happy to discuss this afterwards. 
because that is you, you can put out in a debate here if that's okay or not. But that is a fact. In our case, at least, I mean, you have a market window uh, where you need a product at a decent level, and uh, you may even have promised something to a customer. It happens that also. And so, so what do you do then as a product owner when you have this? You have this situation. You probably you contact your team or several teams, and you do some product refi backlog refinement. You do some grooming, look into this, try to break it down into user stories, to understand how big work is actually this that we should then accomplish before the deadline. And uh, with several teams, uh, you, and as it's big work, maybe you don't know what team will take on what task, actually, or, or what user story. So uh, probably you will do a grooming with some representatives, at least, from the teams or maybe gather all, team, all the teams. And uh, let's say that you see that we won't meet the deadline. That is then based on the maybe velocity or experience that you have with the teams by calculating doing some product uh, burn up, seeing that we will totally miss this deadline. But that's not a fun situation. And probably Michelle, you will go to Ruth and, and uh, talk to her. And uh, Ruth won't be that super happy. Uh, you ask for maybe for more resources. We need more teams. And when do you need them? Well, we need them now, and we'll need them continuously until the deadline. Or, but that's not obvious that you get this at all. I mean, that's that's. The, but that is one one thing, one way of thinking, and that which you try. And you also, of course, try to rescope because it's you, you try to cut off what's not absolutely needed. Um, but when you have such a big feature, there is a limit how much you can cut off because it has to work. Yeah, you can't cut off so many technical things. Always, as you said, you can have dependencies all over the big systems. Okay, so we still, it's not that obvious either. And then you can check the ways ways of working, of course. And you can try with swarms. You can try virtual teams. A lot of things you can try, for sure. But what we have found out works very well in this situation with a firm deadline, but also when you have a, suddenly a big thing, big scope, you don't really see how it will end and when. It's very good to break down this super goal into sub-goals. Exactly, so that you can see Michelle there, she's waving there with her flag. Uh, it doesn't really help because the teams are maybe they are really working on the user stories, but it's quite hard to understand where we are going. Because you, fin you, you work in your sprint, you work with the user stories, but to, to grip this big picture is, is difficult. So we have found out that to break it down into sub-goals, connect it to milestones really in time, that is much closer in time than this overall big long-term goal. And uh, <coughs> we have called it also functional steps. I mean, they create value in the product, not a value that's enough for a customer, but something that is of value for the system. It can be consists of several user stories combined together, uh, integrated and firmly tested. That could be a functional test, and which we show here, three milestones here with their functional steps. And what you do here, you create a focus. You help the team to create a focus. Uh, and um, you also get collaboration, hopefully, with, between the teams. That's what we have seen. It really creates a prioritization among the teams, so you avoid too much local optimization in the teams, but you think more of the whole picture. So that can create that, that the teams start to work between each other. Velocity is not of interest in that, for example, because you just work together towards these goals. So you get a big team working together is that if you have these concrete goals. And also, I think it's easy to see the big picture by having some goals. You have a road that you walk along with the team. So, uh, what else would we then recommend in a large picture? What are, what are the key things here? Yeah. I, I guess the key items here is behind me. Um, it, it's nothing new. It, it's basic things. I guess, I guess for every kind of setup, this is what we, we hope for. We're in communication, transparency. Um, from a project point of view, everything used to be nice and clear. We had very formalized channels of communication. We don't have that anymore. We need to find something that actually works. Um, transparency. We need to let each other know when things are actually working. Most importantly, when they're actually not working. So we, we take away the surprise element. 
And together that will actually build trust. But we also need to remember that I mean, trust is the essential part here, trust between the product owner, trust between the, the product owner, the teams, the teams to each other. And it's not something that comes automatically, it's something we actually need to invest in. Every time we actually get a new team, a new product owner, a new organization to work with, it's something we need to actually take time and actually work with. And then the, the big picture. It, it needs to be remembered all the time. And the last one is actually responsibility. It's assumed to be there, but we can't assume it's there. We, we need to be able to work with it. And then the, the key question is what happens if any of these are actually not there? What do we do? What, as a, a product owner, what can we actually do to, to help it? And that is kind of one of the big questions that is for us. And that's something we would like to continue to discuss. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.